Hello, everybody. We are finally getting a break from the freezing temperatures here in Ohio. The forecast looks like five days where my lows aren't dropping below freezing and there's some rain scattered in. So it is the perfect time to get some of my cool season crops planted. In today's video, I'm going to share which vegetables and herbs I plant before my last spring frost date, why I plant so early and what I do if the temperatures decide to take a turn for the worse again. And I've got a garden full of seedlings. So first, what am I actually planting before my frost date? This isn't an entirely exhaustive list, but rather a list of the most common vegetables and herbs that I plant out before my last spring frost date here in Ohio, which is approximately May 10th to May 15th. Brassicas probably make up the biggest bulk of what I am planting right now. Nearly all members of the brassica family are lovers of cool weather, and that includes vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, mustard, and collards. For the majority of my brassica crops, I start seed indoors in mid-February, aiming for transplant into the garden in mid-April, no later than late April. Since transplanting time is quickly approaching, I'm going to start hardening my seedlings off this week. It's easiest for me just to move these from the house out to my greenhouse, but before I had a greenhouse, I would simply bring these outdoors to a protected area, starting with just a couple hours the first day and building up time each day over the course of a week or two. To. Sometimes with non-heading brassicas, so things like kale, mustard, and collards, I will just direct sow those into the garden starting any time from early March onward. Next are the root crops. Now I generally direct sow all of my root crops and that's going to be things like carrots, beets, radishes, and spring turnips. Note that with rutabagas, storage turnips, and parsnips, I generally only do those as a fall crop, but those are very cold tolerant as well. Root crop seeds will germinate in soil, which is 40 degrees Fahrenheit or above. So if in doubt, check your soil temperature. And remember that you can always get a jump start on warm soil by covering your beds with clear plastic for a week or two prior to planting. Depending on the crop, I'll sow seed anywhere from between mid-March to mid-April. And with quick maturing crops like radishes, I typically will do several successive sowings. For carrots and radish, I start seed mid to late March with new radish plantings going in every two weeks or so. And for beets and spring turnips, I sow any time from mid-March to mid-April. In very cool spring weather, I sometimes hasten germination by using a small cloche or grow tunnel to create a mini greenhouse effect. The trick sometimes with sowing cool season crops is not so much that the seedlings can't stand the cold, it's that the seed takes forever to germinate in cool soil. So if I can create a little mini greenhouse environment to hasten that germination, it really gives me a jump start on growth. Now is the time for planting out members of the Allium family as well. In the spring, I'm typically planting bulb onions, green onions or scallions, leeks, and shallots. For these, I like to get them planted in the garden as early as possible. That typically ends up being mid-March here. I usually do a combination of my own seedlings started from seed indoors late December or very early January, and transplants. Transplants are onion plants that were grown the prior year and typically come in bundles of 40 to 60 plants. These are semi-dormant and will resume growth when planted out. If you plant onion sets, these can be planted at the same time as seedlings or transplants. An onion set is a live dormant onion bulb that was started from seed the previous year. I don't prefer sets as I can't get the varieties that I like, and the harvestable bulbs never seem to be as big as those grown from seed or transplant. But they'll do in a pinch, and sometimes sets are the only things that garden centers have available in the spring. Now, I've still got quite a few cool season crops to mention, but first, I want to take just a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is a wine subscription club with the goal to bring fun back to wine. They believe all people can be wine people, that wine rules are meant to be broken, and that if it can hold wine, it's a wine glass. Case in point, my extra fancy wine glass here. All I had to do to get started was take a quick quiz and Bright Cellars paired me with a selection of wines curated specifically for me. Since my palate tends towards dark chocolate, black coffee, and whiskey, I received six wines perfectly suited to my tastes. 
With each shipment, I receive these wine cards, which give me information about the wines I've received, ideal food pairings, and the opportunity to rate each selection. After working outdoors in the cold spring weather all day, it's delightful to come in and enjoy a rich Cabernet in a good book. And this selection from Folk and Fable is aged in bourbon barrels, giving it a warm, toasty finish with notes of vanilla and caramel. If you'd like to check out Bright Cellars for yourself, click on the link in the video description below to get started. And thank you again to Bright Cellars for giving my viewers the opportunity to get $100 off their subscription. Now, back to those cold hearty veggies. Now I can't talk about spring planting without mentioning potatoes. I've planted as early as early March before, but potato timing depends a lot on what the weather decides to do in any given spring. If we're having a particularly cold and wet spring, I'll sometimes hold off planting until April. This is because potatoes that are planted in cold, wet soil are tend to rotting instead of sprouting. Now, sometimes to get around this, I'll plant my early season potatoes in containers or raised bed where the soil is going to be warmer and drain better. And then I'll do my in-ground plantings in mid-April. I don't like to plant potatoes any later than late April. I've tried early May before and they just do not do well. Part of the reason is because potatoes will stop setting tubers when the temperatures get too warm. So with potatoes, for me, the earlier the better. Another crop that I have better results with planting earlier are peas, and that includes shell peas, snap peas, and snow peas. I typically shoot for the middle to the end of March. Now, peas will germinate in soil temperatures as low as 40 degrees, but the trouble with peas, like potatoes, is that if the soil is cold and wet, they are prone to rot. For very early season plantings, I've gone to either soaking and sprouting pea seed prior to planting or starting peas indoors and transplanting. I actually did a comparison of soaking and sprouting versus transplants versus direct sowing in a video last year and found that I did get an earlier harvest from the transplants and sprouted seeds. And I'll link that video in the description below if you're interested in checking that out. Now there are a whole slew of leafy greens that are extremely cold tolerant and best planted out before that last spring frost date as well. And these include, but aren't limited to, all lettuces, arugula, spinach, endive, escarole, chicory, cilantro, parsley, and dill. Many of these will germinate in soil temperatures as low as 35 degrees Fahrenheit. I had a warm stretch in early February and threw spinach seed out here, and you can see that it's all up and germinated, breezing through temperatures in the teens. These patches were planted out last October and overwintered easily with no protection. With spinach, air on the side of too cold versus too hot. I don't even try to plant out spinach after March anymore. It just does not do well when the temperatures get warm. Other leafy greens and herbs are notoriously cold hardy as well. Lettuce seedlings are actually less susceptible to cold damage than full grown lettuce. With most of these vegetables and herbs, I do a combination of direct sowing and starting indoors. I typically start a batch indoors in February. Here's a tray that I started on February 14th, and this has been hardening off in the greenhouse for about a week. And then I also direct sow succession plantings up until mid-April or so. Now bulb fennel, celery, and celeriac are also cool season crops for me. These I plant a little bit later, just a few weeks before that last spring frost date, as they're not quite as cold tolerant as some of the other crops, but do tend to do better with cooler, milder weather. Now for more on growing bulb fennel specifically, check out last week's video, but I generally start bulb fennel indoors in early March, aiming for transplant around the third week of April. With celery and celeriac, it's a little slower growing crop, so I'll typically start those seeds indoors anywhere from late January to early February, transplanting out the middle to end of April. So I'm sure some of you are asking, why plant so early? What is the rush? It's not because I'm overly eager to get outside and play in the dirt. Well, part of it's that, but it's more about the benefit to the actual crops. It's because these vegetables and herbs do not like the heat. 
In areas with long, cool springs, an extended period of time where it stays in the 60s and 70s, you've got a lot more leeway as to when you are planting. Here in Ohio and in many areas of the Midwest, we're starting to get pretty warm by June. Often it's climbing into the 80s by the end of May. And I want to make sure that I'm timing my plantings so that I'm able to harvest before it gets really stinking hot and humid. Heat typically sustain temperatures of above 85 degrees Fahrenheit and longer day lengths sends the signal to many of these plants that it is time to bolt and set seed. Crops like peas and root crops quickly turn bitter in the heat. And as I mentioned earlier, potatoes stop setting tubers. That being said, there has been a lot of breeding work done on cool season crops that are more tolerant to heat. So even within a certain crop, Let's take lettuce as an example. There are some varieties that turn so bitter as to basically be inedible as soon as the temperatures get warm, while there are some that will hold that eating quality much later into the season. Winter density, for example, is one of my long-standing lettuce favorites because not only does it tolerate cold, but it doesn't get nasty and bitter in the warmer weather. Now, one of the scariest things about cool weather gardening here in Ohio is that inevitable swing back into the frigid temperatures that often happens towards the end of April. We have a lovely stretch of mild spring-like weather and then bam, it's back into the 20s and snowing. When you've got a garden full of young seedlings, this can be a really scary prospect, especially as a gardener who's new to cool season gardening. But I'm here to tell you that you may not need to worry as much as you think about your little babies out in the garden. First, I want you to be aware of several variables when it comes to cold temperatures and seedlings. The first is to consider how well those seedlings were hardened off and how long they've had to get established. If I have lettuce seedlings that I spent two weeks acclimating to the cold, they've been in the garden for two weeks, and then it drops down into the 20s for a couple of nights, I'm not gonna worry. I'm not even gonna bother covering them. They may suffer a little frost damage on the outer leaves, but they will pop back from that. But if I have lettuce seedlings that came directly from a 72 degree house, out into the garden for a week and then the temperatures drop, I'm either swaddling those babies in frost blankets or I can kiss them goodbye. So please just be sure to harden off your seedlings well before planting them out. Another consideration are the other environmental factors besides the temperature. So if it's going to drop below freezing, but your soil is moist, the humidity is high, and or it is raining or snowing, your seedlings are gonna have a better chance of foregoing any kind of cold or frost damage than if the conditions are very, very dry. And while cold hardiness can vary pretty significantly within individual varieties of a given crop, here are some general guidelines as to what established plants can handle. Crops like cauliflower, fennel, and many mature lettuces, especially heading types, are cold tolerant into the upper 20s. When we drop to the mid 20s, we're looking at crops like peas. You may see some cold damage on the foliage, but they'll grow out of it. Cabbage, broccoli, though some broccoli varieties can go lower, and chard. Dropping down to the low 20s, some of these even down into the teens, are leafy greens like arugula, spinach, collards, mustard, most lettuce seedlings, and many cut and come again lettuce types. Cilantro, parsley, endive, root crops like carrots, onions, garlic, rutabaga, turnip, radish, beets, kohlrabi, kale, and potatoes. Now with potatoes, the greens will die back, but the plants typically will pop out of that and sprout up new green growth when it is warm enough. Now back to that hardening off factor. For pretty much everything but the most cold tolerant of crops, if I plant them out and within a week those temperatures dropped back down below freezing, I'm probably gonna cover them with frost blankets. Some of those seedlings would probably survive, but I don't like to chance it. Plus, 
Exposing young seedlings to extreme changes in temperature induces stress that they may not come out of. With particularly sensitive crops like cauliflower, this can lead to them putting on premature heads or bolting. My go-to for frost protection is just using wire hoops and frost blanket, which I pin into the ground. This is just the easiest and most reliable strategy that I have found so far. There are varying weights in frost blankets, but I use a one and a half ounce anti-frost row cover, which gives me cold protection down to 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I much prefer frost blankets over clear plastic tunneling. Fabric is far more forgiving in that I don't have to worry about taking it off during the day and putting it back on at night. Plastic creates a strong greenhouse effect. So if we happen to get a very warm, particularly sunny day, that can easily fry young seedlings. Fabric is permeable, so it allows more air and water movement through the material. And I find that it does a better job of just keeping a more constant temperature versus the plastic where it can get very warm and then cool off very quickly. But things like plastic tunnels and cloches and domes can do a good job protecting from frosty nights. Just be sure to remove them if you get a very sunny day the next day. Mulching heavily can also help protect newly emerged seedlings from extreme temperatures. I've had good results just piling leaf mulch over tiny young peas and carrots when the temperatures dip and simply clearing it out of the way when the temperatures warm back up. Now, I've got a lot of planting to do while the weather is still cooperating, so I'm going to get to it. But if you have any tips you can share about cool weather gardening, please drop a line in the comments below. And if you found today's video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel, Growfully with Jenna. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. You can just pop it right in that hole. And I'm standing up straight, and now, now, brush, now bring the dirt around it and pat it in real tight. Okay, you gotta make sure it's tight in there. See, cross like this.